president eat of it. The name of the sheep, the sheep, sheep <laughs> is gullet. So we made some kind of uh, a tool for future digital activists, cyber war, humanitarian work with digital surveillance, victims, electronic frontiers, and explorers, Chris Hanna, to net runners, alienated loners at the edge of digital society and everyone else. So, uh, and probably this is why, why I was invited to speak here, because the topic is Internet Dystopia, and the conference was like really speaking about that. So I tried to, to, to make a, some kind of, uh, to try to understand this kind of new, new situation that we are living in regarding internet. And this this topic feeling that all of us have. So it's really hard to, to try to map the geography. I will we'll read a bit because not, not to speak a lot of unconnected images <coughs> that will like damage your brain in some sense. So it's really hard to try to map the the geography of this new land of internet dystopia. It's hard because we get used to have perception of internet as, as a magic man which will liberate our life, expand individual freedom and transform us into some kind of superhuman being. Somehow it turns into opposite scenario. It turns to be the most sophisticated surveillance system ever. Somehow it transforms us from users into, into the products and targets. Somehow maybe it's completely normal that most of us feel betrayed. But let me try to define this uh, few points, few pillars of this new uh, internet dystopia. The, the first one, I will try to speak from the level first, from our like, basic level, it's, it's our habits and knowledge and trust. Our habits are the first and probably the most difficult problem uh, that we need to deal with. It's our relation with the tools that we use and the way uh, how we are consuming and creating. Just for the moment, I will try to go back to this some kind of, probably you know him all, uh, the guy called uh, Marshall McLuhan, and try to think about the internet as a some kind of expansion of our senses, because he thinks that the media are extensions of our senses, and to try to think about the internet in that way. Uh, so, internet is an extension of our senses, our memory, our eyes, our ears. Some kind of vast universe of tiny uh, little streams that are connecting us with uh, every person on this planet, every piece of knowledge, so it's something great. But the main problem is the, the, uh, the tools that are like connecting us, all, all of these tiny streams, the main problem is that we are not aware or we don't have a control over these little tools uh, that are establishing this connection. And uh, so, and even if we don't want to know, most of the tools are locked behind the proprietary uh, and patent laws. And in our unconsciousness, we blindly have a trust in big internet companies, internet service providers, proprietary software companies, Intelligent providers to manage, shape, and filter extensions of our senses. So we can somehow outsource all of this without thinking to someone else. Okay. Uh, the problem is that we get into it. We love to share our private life, to use free services of internet giants because it's easy and comfortable, because it's more effective. Our habits slowly shape our ne uh, neural connections so that we feel them as our natural extensions. Google became part of the nature, extension of our memory, source of our knowledge. And those extensions, our private and social spaces, became mediated by the almost invisible middleman. Only minority of users, we can say the most within the free software community, have this privilege to understand and have control over their own tools, law and communication. The rest of us, the normal, equal normal users, we lost control over technology that we are so dependent on. Another pillar, another point, that is part of this internet dystopia is centralization of internet. Uh, we managed to centralize and monopolize the internet into the hands of a few huge companies, who in turn hold most of the information, resources, knowledge, and data. 
was to do a big internet company and met uh, much of the world's communication flow is based on going to the United States. This is a kind of uh, data visualization about the traffic flow. And you can really uh, easily see that the completely US centralized uh, world in the sense of uh, uh, internet traffic. Uh, every tweet, most of the emails, most of the cloud service, most of the server farms, every electronic money transaction made by Visa card or PayPal are sent to base being processed and staying forever in the United States. They are subject to the rules and interventions required by United States law or government. In some cases, those companies are censoring or taking other actions based on the U.S. pressure. Uh, centralization is not just present in the uh, segment of services. There is a strong centralization of technical, critical infrastructure based in the United States. At the same time, there is another <coughs> phenomenon, uh, and we can say another illusion, uh, based on the overhyped startup ideology. There is a illusion that millions of startups are not just outsourced research and development for those few big internet companies. We somehow believe, in fact, that it is completely normal that the majority of startups or micro businesses will die in the first two years, and those few happy ones will be bought over by the big companies and achieve their ultimate dream to be young and keen. So let's say 12 uh, Another key word also, again, stated in this or not in this, or it's some kind of construct or not, but we can like, think about it as another pillar of this internet destruction, is big data. Big data is a new natural resource. Okay, this is something that we really often hear in the press and, and like everywhere. So it's a new natural resource. Or we can also hear all of the 21st century. So let, let us think a bit about it. 2.5 billion gigabytes of information produced every day is the present amount of this new resource. So every day there is new 2.5 billion gigas of information. If we follow the model of the denial, who are the trillions of dead organisms, dog, lanterns, and algae? Buried, uh, buried underneath the sedimentary rock, rocks billion years ago, in this case. Those dead poor organisms are unfortunately all of our personal data that we produce. The deadly disease that poisoned us, all of us, is known as the death of rights. Who does all of our data? Who is benefiting from it? Who is trading it? Basically, all of by the same pattern, like in the centralization of internet. They are the same actors. Big internet companies, uh, search engines, social networks, government agencies, internet service providers, and we have a few like the telecom companies as a one important guy. Yeah, you are too. It's so much to say that they are the only responsible for decentralization of new uh, resource and future value. Uh, in case of search engines, cloud services, uh, cloud services and social networks, the responsibility is also on our side. We are willingly trading our personal data without any consciousness for the benefit of using a free state-of-the-art services offered by Google, Facebook and the others. Even if we are willing to trade our data for free services, our chances to get those data back to us, even as a copy, will lead us to a long and not clear legal procedures. Uh, this is Max Schreck. It's the guy, the student from Vienna, who tried to get his internet, uh, uh, the data that Facebook collecting about him. And he made like one really long legal trial with them, and on the end, on the end, he gets some kind of DVD with, I think, uh, I don't know, gigabytes and gigabytes of data. And then he brings this, and now he's running one organization called Europe for the data. So, we will get stuck in the long uh, legal procedures or in some cases you will never be able to get your data back or delete them from existence. On the other side, there is a vast, a vast, a vast amount of data collected without our consent. Data retention of 
power metadata, phone logs, GPS coordinates, managing sections, IP addresses, cookies, vast amounts of our data, traits, and our personal history. We do not own our digital history and our invisible data footprint. It is owned by the internet services that we use, internet service provider, and the governments we use them, trade them, and exploit them in the future. Who controls the present, controls the past, Controls the past, controls the future. Parker, that space forward. Target. Uh, this visualization about big data, how many billions, 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 mega, giga bytes are produced, and, and we can in a way see owned by. Another hard world of like another topic, another uh, pillar of this internet dystopia is total surveillance. Lack of care for, for the tools and media of communication that we use mixed with the need to constantly update and publish private information on every segment of our lives, on every step, combined with the centralized services and infrastructure and on our dependence on technology, get those ingredients and cook it in the military industrial surveillance machine. So on one side we have all of these things like our bad habits, centralization of the internet, and, and, and on the other side, I think this is completely the normal step that military industrial complex in this, this case will start to use all of these weaknesses and try to build something that, that, that would transform into internet and already transform internet into the biggest surveillance machine ever. Uh, and cook in the military industrial surveillance machine and you get the biggest and most effective global surveillance system ever. To make things worse, it's a free market, blooming market of surveillance tools and technology all around the globe, enabling you to track and monitor every citizen in your poor third world country, totalitarian country, for just a few hundred thousand dollars. You probably all follow this kind of spy files, uh, WikiLeaks, and things like this, so you probably know a lot. I would like to quote the famous singer Sting from <laughs> the also ironically called band Police. And this I can show you. So the song is like, uh, there is one song from him here. I'll be watching you, and it was something going like every step you make, every move you take, every threat you make, I'll be watching you. Probably put in some kind of other context with love, but. <laughs> 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 this is also love. The sun will not be.
you make something wrong, then in this little town, like, I don't know, like the water tank explodes or like the train collapses or something. Uh, new global trends, new terminology. There is completely like the dictionaries of this new uh, internet military terminology. New forms of jihad, new forms of terrorism, new, new heroes and anti heroes. You saw this uh, uh, WikiLeaks uh, task force, the short like WTF. <laughs> on the one side you have like uh, anti-hero, this is Mr. Assange, and on the other side you have some kind of task force of, of heroes who is fighting. New viruses and malwares, new and old private, private contractors with billion dollar budget, new fears, New territories and new sources of conquer, new alliances with the corporate sector, new operations, new cyber industrial complex, new secrets, new cyber security consultants companies, new cyber mercenaries, new research centers, new mass surveillance industry. It's a brand new and exciting world for cyber industrial military complex around the globe. It's a huge industry and a brand new territory to invest. New reasons to take, spend and earn billions of dollars from tax payers. It's a new playground. Unfortunately, there is a great chance that all of us will become cyber world collateral, collateral damage. Cyber war victims, cyber war refugees, probably before that so-called cyber war events uh, even start to really exist. The price that all of us will pay in advance is the end of crisis, total surveillance, loss of trust, and the zombification of the technology that we use. My wife, Oli, she was complaining about this zombification as something not clear. In this sense, we zombies are the, the our computers that we use, our own personal computers, that turn into the zombies so that someone else is controlling them by using of some kind of malware. The Defense Department named cyberspace, this, this is the text from the, 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 the home page of, of uh, Defense Department. The Defense Department named cyberspace a new domain of uh, warfare in 2011. Today, U.S. Cyber Command, the services and U.S. partners and allies are working together to make uh, that inherently collaborative, adaptable environment a suitable place for military command and control. So we have we have military in back, or maybe they never went, but we have them back together with us. So if you are thinking about some kind of internet ecosystem, we are thinking about us as the users, but we were always thinking about the corporate sector that we are dealing with. Ecosystem. We were thinking about governments who are like trying to, to do some kind of new laws or to regulate the space. But now we should really think about the, the military as the one of new or big animals in this ecosystem that probably is going to, to change the nature of this ecosystem really violently. But now this first part was a bit like on the dark side. Now I, I will come because I wanted to give some kind of positive uh, 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 ideas in, in this moment. Uh, so it's a positive part. What we should do or what to do. This is just my personal point of view. There, there should be and there is like one billion other uh, points of views. And, and so the first one is keep, keep calm and rethink everything. For the moment, let's just slow down a bit. Do we really need to consume so much? Do we really need to share everything about every segment of our personal life? Do we really need to participate in all of this? Should we all emigrate to dark net, invent some new internet, and leave this one to die? Have no idea. But what is for certain, we should talk and discuss our future strategies probably more than ever. So, it's really nice that we gather here and that we can speak. Uh, 
keep calm and code new load. Keep your eyes open and follow every legal movement in the creation of new legislation. Our network of networks was not made to be an ultimate surveillance machine and the end of privacy. It was also not made to serve an old and obsolete business giant built on a pro proprietary function and distribution. Analyze, understand, create awareness, defend or attack, or just spread the word. There are some organizations worldwide that are doing a great job. BFF, for example, Badrasurdenet, Adri, Privacy International, and our little share defense team is trying to do the same in the Balkan region. Courtrooms and parliament will be our battlefield of our internet freedom. Keep calm and consume and share defense. Become an info vegan. Build your own independently prepared network. Or information between a uh, network of information between trusted and blocked views. Create your own social network and reclaim your own content and information in order to be free and share them in the way uh, you want to share. Read books, share books. To read the book became socially unaccepted behavior that is taking you off from the social network and exercising your brain to be able to receive more than 140 characters of information from one human being. Go off the grid sometimes. Exercise more Keep calm and reclaim your day. We need to build a, a mechanism which will allow us to be the owners of our own data, metadata and, and our content. We need to start to think how to implement our right to access to our data, to choose how data will be used and under which circumstances. We should have the right to delete our data, delete forever, because that's, that's one of the problems that there is, you cannot delete your email. Uh, if you're your email, email is in the cloud, more or less you, you, are not, you cannot delete. It will stay somewhere forever. We should try to build standards which will allow, allow us data portability so we can take our personal data and move to some other place or platform. And if we need to store our data and content, we should build a new trusted and secure data bank that should be based on the values of privacy and respect for user rights. We should get down from the cloud and back to Earth. Keep calm and decentralize. Build something else or create something else. There is much more tools or platforms than Google, Facebook, and Use, for example, DuckDuckGo or some other search engine instead of Google. Use Diaspora or make some new Diaspora. Go back to Usenet. Build your own mesh network. Keep calm and use cryptography. Use crypto, use store and VPN. Not because there is something to hide, but because that is your human rights to communicate and express yourself freely. We should fight to make encrypted communication a standard for any digital communication. Create so many encrypted information that the total surveillance will become more expensive and not possible to perform. Calm and code free software and hardware. This is probably the. We need free software and, and free uh, and open hardware for the free world. This is not a solution uh, for every of our problem, but it is the first. But, but it is the first step in the battle to save our future. We are all with all the things that we have, that is happening right now in this moment. There is a loss loss of trust in technology that we use. We can't trust government. We cannot trust ICT. We cannot trust in proprietary software. We cannot trust telecom companies. We cannot trust in hardware that we personally use. We cannot trust communication infrastructure that is surrounding us. Only way to get trust back is to demand absolute transparency of every segment of technology <coughs> that we use. This transparency is a free software and hardware. This moment of crisis is a crucial moment for the free software community to be backbone of future freedom communication and freedom of expression.
transition. This is just that we are not so tech based. And when the shared component is starting to move around, then on one side we have like, you know, this community of really cool people and, and like uh, speakers and really like some kind of theme, the like theme of internet activism uh, uh, around the world gathering in one place. And on the other side we have like a lot of people attending this, but it's like just for a few days and a lot of like talks. And then we, we said, okay, but it's really missing is to try to change something on the long term. So we gathered a group of uh, uh, lawyers, uh, uh, researchers, and, and technicians, and together with electronic frontiers foundations and some other organizations to help us how to start with this building and start to, to do the, the, the analysis of the local laws regarding internet, uh, whistleblowing protection, privacy in the region. And it, was, and it really went well because the, there was nothing like this in, in the region at that moment. So now we have some kind of regional network of, of lawyers. Maybe it sounds like a bit like not fun, but it, it is really fun to, 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 to deal with the lawyers and to make some kind of new, <laughs> new uh, breed of, of lawyers who will defend our, our, our freedom of expression so we, we cannot help like uh, for example people from here because we are dealing with some local laws but what we are doing also we are continuing with, with this kind of gathering and the next one is probably going to happen yesterday in the train so we are planning to, to take like one train and put inside of the train like a lot of activists, lawyers, uh, uh, media activists, and to put them in this kind of small wagons and lock them and then they are like trying to deal with some problems and the train is moving around uh, uh, Serbia in this case. And it's really shitty. <laughs> so, Because to organize something big, you 
are somehow damaging the, the tiny local team who feel like there is a, some I don't know, space shuttle coming and they, the, the space shuttle will suck all of their local money and no, 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 no. so it's never ever easy. I think the best way is to, to, to I don't know, people pay the tickets. <laughs> But uh, we cannot do this anymore because first our our, our like peers and people who are standing are really poor, so like we we don't know. This is not really maybe we can I don't know start some social entrepreneurship stuff or something. Time to time, there is, there is this like survey that they're saying that people don't care about privacy and they they will rather give their own whatever to, to Google or Facebook and poke their friends until they don't die. Uh, but on other side, you know, like it's you know what majority thinks sometimes.
sooner or later it's gonna be. It's like the dirty video, like if you don't want nobody to see it, they don't make it. Exactly. Yeah, but, but when is the dirty video session? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 